Right now at 6, the state of Missouri requests an execution date for a man convicted of raping and killing a child in Newton County. And although we start off in the low 30s, we're warming up to have a really nice Friday ahead. Plus, residents of a burned Joplin apartment building find shelter during their recovery. The four states most watched news starts now. Good morning, four states, and welcome to the KOA Morning News. It's 6 a.m. I'm Elise Snowy. And I'm Lindsay Gaffney. It's finally Friday here in the four states. We hope that you had a great week and you're going to, you know, have a great weekend ahead of you. It's going to be warmer, which is always it great. Is. It's always a great start. Yeah, especially today. I'm looking forward to the temperatures today. It's going to be sunny all day long. Oops. Right now, still a little bit chilly, so it may not look as promising, but I can assure you it's not going to be too windy today, so those temperatures are going to get to be into the upper 60s. And if you don't like it too hot, this is going to be the perfect day for you. Sunny all day long, and the wind chill is not going to be too low since we don't have any fast winds today. Temperatures right now still, though, in the lower 30s to mid 30s. Stockton 32, Nevada 34, Fort Scott 33. So still close to freezing, which is why we have that frost advisory in effect. Now these wind chills start off a little bit cooler, but as we warm up, they're going to warm up as well. So it's not something to be concerned about. But if you walk out the door this morning, you may think it's a little bit cooler than you would want it to be. Frost advisory in effect until about 8 a.m. It's expanded to most of our counties out in Kansas as well as all of our counties in Missouri. But luckily after this, we're going to be warmer in the morning time, so we won't have any more frost to deal with for a while. We may see some clouds in the region, but no rain, not until Saturday night. So today it's going to be shaping up to be a really nice day. No fast winds, no rain, cloud here or there, but overall getting up into the upper 60s, and sunny all day long. It's going to be a really nice day ahead. That streak continues tomorrow as we're pushing into the 70s for most of the day. Winds do pick up and clouds increase ahead of some storms that we have coming in Saturday night. But I'll have all those details for you in just a bit. All right, thanks, Lindsay. We'll check in with you in just a bit. Well, Thursday afternoon, a rollover crash occurred on Ibex Road near Kentucky Road southwest of Neo Show. Newton County coroner pronounced George Owens 57 of Neo show on scene. Missouri State Highway Patrol troopers investigating the crash say the Ford F-150 left the road to the right, overcorrected and overturned through a fence into a field. Missouri Attorney General requests an execution date for a convicted child killer in southwest Missouri. 16 years after the death of a Rowan Ford, the AG's office takes steps to move forward with the execution of Christopher Collings. In November of 2007, Collings abducted, raped, and murdered nine-year-old Rowan Ford from Stella, Missouri in Newton County. He later threw her body in a sinkhole known as Cave, Fox Cave, rather, near Powell, Missouri in McDonald County. Court records show Collings burned the rope he used to strangle Ford, the blood-stained clothing he wore during the attack, and his blood-stained mattress. Collings eventually confessed to authorities. In 2012, a jury from Plate County in a courtroom in Phelps County convicted Collings and sentenced him to death. Ford's stepfather, David Spears, was also charged with murder and rape, but pleaded guilty to reduced charges of child endangerment and hindering prosecution. Authorities in Pittsburgh charge a man they say broke into a home armed with a knife. It happened Wednesday around 5.15 p.m. in the 900 block of East 8th Street. Police responded to a call about a man breaking into a home. When they arrived, the homeowner was outside and told them the suspect was inside. Officers went in and arrested 25-year-old Zach Camplin of Pittsburgh. He's charged with aggravated assault, criminal threat, and criminal damage to property. Some residents of the Joplin Apartments building that burned overnight are now in a temporary shelter. Fortunately, no one was seriously hurt. 
That fire broke out at the North Park Apartments on East Newman Road just before 10 Wednesday night. Six out of the 24 apartments were damaged. Firefighters evacuated 38 occupants out of the three story structure. It like stressed out in the beginning, you know, because mm -hmm. everybody was just drilling and rushing, people running around. It's just very crowded and, you know, people crying because they think that my mom's in a fire. So I had to warn people that everything, everybody was safe and stuff like that, just trying to get everybody comfortable. The state fire marshal is investigating the cause of the fire. Authorities tell us they're looking at the possibility that it was sparked by an electrical malfunction. Now to look at this morning's top stories in weather in our first seven minutes coming up on the KOM Morning News. There's a new timeline for restoring access to the Port of Baltimore following last week's bridge collapse. Plus an ultimatum from President Biden during his phone call with the Israeli Prime Minister. And meteorologist Lindsay Gaffney returns with another look at your Friday forecast. You're watching the KOEA Morning News. We'll be right back. But first, here's a live look from the Antiquish Mall and Missouri's largest garage sale. Complete twin bed, two ninety nine. Home outlet is your home store. Topping Nation Watch this morning. Disney Plus is cracking down on password sharing. The streaming platform will start to curb password, password sharing rather in June in some countries and more broadly in September. It's part of Disney's efforts to boost signups and revenue as the streaming service continues to lose money. CEO Bob Iger appointed to the jump in signups its rival Netflix has seen since its recent crackdown on password sharing. According to data from Antenna, the subscription media company, Netflix added 100,000 new accounts in the two days after its crackdown went into effect. Iger called Netflix the gold standard in streaming and said he hopes a similar boost could help move the company's streaming platform toward profitability. The legal battle between Angelina Jolie and Brad Pitt continues. New legal documents are emerging, alleging a history of physical abuse on Jolie, a history of it that dates back before the publicly known plane ride in 2016. The documents were filed as part of the continued legal battle over the French winery they once owned together. Thursday, Jolie filed a motion in the Los Angeles Superior Court saying Pitt wanted her to sign an NDA before selling her share. Jolie says the NDA would have prohibited her from speaking publicly about the abuse of Jolie and their children. Pitt had filed a lawsuit in 2022 claiming he and Jolie agreed and neither would sell their share of the winery without the consent of the other. There's a new timeline for restoring access to the Port of Baltimore following last week's bridge collapse. The U.S. Army Corps of Engineers announced Thursday that it plans to fully reopen the channel leading to the Baltimore port by the end of May. Before then, by the end of April, it plans to open a limited access channel. Crews are removing wreckage from the site where a cargo ship slammed into the key bridge on March 26, causing it to collapse into the channel. Six construction workers were killed. Four of their bodies have not been recovered. Authorities have said clearing the channel will lead to the reopening of the port to vessel traffic, but it will also allow for the continued search for bodies. Next week, President Joe Biden will host Japanese Prime Minister Kashida at the White House for an official visit to the United States. The visit will include a meeting, a joint news conference and a state dinner. This will be the fifth official a visit Biden has hosted as president. The visit underscores the importance of the alliance between the U.S. and Japan as both countries seek to counterbalance China's influence. The leaders are expected to discuss efforts to strengthen political security and economic ties between the U.S. and Japan. Biden and Kishida last met in person in November during the Asia-Pacific Economic Cooperation Summit in San Francisco, California. 
An ultimatum from President Biden during his phone call with Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu yesterday. It was their first conversation since Monday's airstrike by Israeli forces, which killed seven aid workers with the World Central Kitchen. It's an action the president called unacceptable. President Biden also issued a warning for Israel to immediately do more to protect civilians or face a shift in U.S. policy. CBS News' Jared Hill has the latest from New York. Overnight, the Israeli government approved three new humanitarian corridors into Gaza. The move, CBS News has learned, was a specific request by President Biden during his high-stakes phone call Thursday with Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu. The White House says during the roughly 30-minute conversation, the president made clear that U.S. policy with respect to Gaza hinges on Israel's immediate action to better protect civilians. The president also called for an immediate ceasefire. We will support... Um and, and make sure that Israel is never left without it, an ability to defend itself. At the same time, if there are not changes to their approach, um, it is very likely we're going to change our approach. The aid routes include a reopening at the Erez Crossing in northern Gaza, which has been closed since the beginning of the war, temporary use of a port, and expanding the flow of aid trucks at the border with Jordan. There is no higher priority in Gaza than protecting civilians, surging humanitarian assistance, and ensuring the security of those who provide it. This all comes after a horrific Israeli airstrike killed seven aid workers with World Central Kitchen earlier this week. The group, including a dual Canadian-American citizen, was driving in a safe zone in marked vehicles. Israel says it was a grave mistake, and the results of their internal investigation will be made public soon. Top executives with World Central Kitchen have called for independent investigations. Jared Hill. CBS News. The president continues to face criticism from some Republican members of Congress over Israel. House Majority Leader Steve Scalise posted on social media last night, quote, the Biden administration's treatment of Israel is outrageous. Yesterday, Netanyahu told a group of U.S. GOP lawmakers that a victory for Israel in its war against Hamas is also a victory for the U.S. That's a look at some of today's top national stories. Now here's Lindsay with a look at your forecast. We start off a little bit cooler than average today, but we'll warm up into the upper 60s. And we've got storm chances rolling in this weekend. We'll go over all those details in just a bit. Honey, can you bring me a water? Honey. Are you game? I am ready. Then take a spin on the Wheel of Fortune. Well, do you think you could outrun a subway train? Well, it might be an immediate no for most of us, including myself. Two men decided they'd put that question to the test. The buddies chose the shortest distance between two stops in New York and recorded each other making the attempt. As Jeannie Moose reports, the one you'd expect to win didn't. And now he's vowing to try again. What New Yorker hasn't sat on the subway thinking... I feel like I could be faster than this train, and that's where the whole idea kind of came from. You think you can do it? You think you can do it? Oh, yeah, he can do it. He can do it. Two buddies, Tyler Schwartz and Joe Fowler. Go, 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 go! We're seeing if Joe can outrun the New York City subway. Each tried to beat the train at the shortest distance between two stops, 18th and 14th streets. Not quite a quarter mile. Oh, yeah. They took turns. There's no way. Dodging pedestrians, jumping the turnstile. Tyler is a serious runner. But by the time he got to the next station. No! Way. <laughs> no! Tyler! Did the train just come through? I failed. As for Tyler's non runner friend, Joe, an Australian. Where is he? But Joe snatched victory from the jaws of the closing door. Yes! 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 <laughs> the glass doors were stuck like Dijon mustard, but for whatever reason, they opened up. The passengers cheered. You sort of felt like you were in the Olympics? Honestly, yeah, it felt like I won gold. The winning run lasted a minute and a half. So you must be annoyed at Joe for, for winning. <laughs> if my friend is able to do it, hell yeah, that's awesome. Joe says the funniest part was when Tyler failed to arrive and the train left without him. This is so awkward. I'm stuck in the subway right now. <laughs> but they're already planning a... Uh, Next time. 
maybe you should quit while you're ahead. <laughs> also true. I'm behind. I'm behind. <laughs> I need my redemption. After all, he's the one who lent a hand so the winner could get a foot in the door. <laughs> Genimos, CNN. I'm going to outrun the train. It's my destiny to do so. <laughs> New York. How about that? Quite impressive indeed. Now over to Lindsay with a quick look at your forecast. With temperatures across the region still sticking in the low 30s, we have that frost advisory in effect until 8 a.m. today. After that, we're going to warm up pretty significantly into the upper 60s. That streak's going to continue through the weekend, but we also have some storm chances rolling in on Saturday. I'll have more details for you right after the break. OAM is sponsored by Integris Health with hospitals in Miami and Grove. Integris Health, partnering with people to live healthier lives. Well, it is shaping up to be a really nice day. We've got that sunrise coming up. Temperature still in the lower to mid 30s today, though. About as what it was yesterday. We had a high of only 62, though, so it was a bit cooler yesterday. We did have that frost advisory started then and it continues through this morning at about 8 a.m. is when it expires. Now over in Wichita in the orange, that is a wind advisory. We're going to have those winds tomorrow. So we'll, we could expect possibly a wind advisory moving into tomorrow and planning for your weekend. But today there are not going to be many clouds in the area, maybe a few, but no rain on the forecast, not until Saturday night. That system is still out in California. It'll be making its way into our area. Pretty short lived though in the overnight hours on Saturday. We'll take a closer look at that in just a moment. And temperatures still in the lower 30s, even some below freezing. Iola 31, Fort Scott 31, Stockton and Nevada both 32. But some of our other counties starting to warm up to the upper 30s. As we move through the day, we start off pretty cool, 34 degrees, but light winds less than five miles per hour. But moving into the afternoon, we're going to warm up to the upper 60s. This is for the Joplin region, but surrounding counties still getting up into the upper 60s, maybe even hitting 70s in some areas and winds pick up slightly about five, 10 miles per hour. Clouds roll in this evening, not too heavy, just a few clouds, but temperatures only drop down to the lower 50s for our overnight low. So it's going to be a really nice day and a nice evening as well. If you plan on having going out and making any plans, it would be a good night to do so. Tomorrow may not be since we do have those storms coming in. Most of the day on Saturday, it'll be warm but windy. Those clouds roll in early afternoon and then we're going to get those storms late on Saturday, clearing in the morning hours on Sunday, about 6 a.m. They'll definitely be out of our area. We'll take a closer look at that. Temperatures pretty warm, 11 p.m. on Saturday, still in the upper 60s. That's when we're going to start to see these thunderstorms moving into our area. Then we'll continue on. Most of us getting some heavier rain at about 2.30, 3 a.m. Continuing on, it'll be completely out of our region by 6 a.m. So like I said, pretty short lived and we do have a marginal risk for storms tomorrow, but we're not expecting many severe uh, occurrences with that system. Just maybe hear some thunder or lightning in the area. But other than that, it's going to be a pretty nice couple of days. Friday getting up into the upper 60s, Saturday hitting 70s, and Sunday still be breezy, but also be in the 70s. Now clouds roll in on Monday, just about the time that we're going to expect to see that solar eclipse move through our area, and we'll keep you updated on what you can expect to see for that event. But right now we'll go over to Health Watch with Elise. All right, thanks, Lindsay. Well, nurse stimulation to treat sleep apnea has now been approved for obese patients, but researchers at the University of Washington University School of Medicine found the more overweight a patient is, the less likely the treatment is to work. Doctors say a body mass index is an important factor in predicting whether nerve stimulation will successfully treat sleep apnea. A smartphone app and a real life coach may be the best way to prepare and recover from surgery. Researchers at the University of Pittsburgh found the combination helps simplify doctors instructions and keeps patients accountable. It also resulted in shorter hospital stays and cut the risk of readmission in with half within a week of surgery. 
And a new review of a data from the NCAA finds suicide among college student athletes has doubled over the past 20 years, while suicide rates among all age groups are up 36%. The exact cause for the jump among athletes is unknown, but researchers say the pressures of school performance and the field and physical fatigue can lead to depression and mental health issues. The total solar eclipse is just days away, but a new survey finds many Americans are not aware of the potential dangers of viewing the eclipse if they don't prepare. Bradley Blackburn has more. The excitement and anticipation are growing as the total solar eclipse approaches, but that rare view in the sky could damage your eyes if you don't take precautions. A new survey of more than 1,000 Americans finds one-third don't know looking at a solar eclipse without proper eye protection can cause permanent damage. The retina is really what gives us our vision, and that's the thing that we're most concerned about, the sun's rays impacting the retina. After the 2017 eclipse, there were people that suffered vision loss. Dr. Nicholas Command is an emergency medicine physician with Ohio State University Wexner Medical Center. He says while having the compliant ISO 12312-2 glasses is critical, there are other concerns to consider. Many people will be traveling to get a better view, which could cause crowding and heavy traffic in some areas. So Dr. Command says be prepared. The last thing that I, I think a lot of people are missing is the infrastructure stresses that the eclipse is going to have on our country. I think probably not enough thought is being given to what I need when I travel. You're going to need to make sure that your car has a full tank of gas, that you have water, that you have snacks, that you have your medication. He advises having an emergency kit with first aid supplies, medications, cell phone chargers, weather appropriate clothing, and a map. Be sure to discuss your eclipse viewing plans with family and anticipate that it will take you a few hours to leave your eclipse viewing location. Bradley Blackburn, CBS News, New York. The poll also found more than 10% of those surveyed believe an eclipse can cause natural disasters, sleep problems, and mental health issues. Now to look at some of today's top health stories, we'll be right back. In the heart of Grove, Oklahoma, a new era of health care. Beautiful smile. In three days, come to the Creative Learning Alliance Celebration Eclipse Viewing Party. Right now at 6.30, Allen Community College in Iola kicked off its annual Aggie Days event. And the sun comes up to warm us up pretty drastically today, shaping up to be a really nice Friday. Plus a message for the four states on this National Month of Hope. The four states most watched news starts now. Good morning, four states, and welcome to the KOA Morning News. It's 6.30. I'm Elise Snowy. And I'm Lindsay Gaffney. Yes, and it's a Friday here, and if you missed it in our 5 o'clock, it's also National Deep Dish Day. So if you haven't had breakfast, there you go. You know what <laughs> to have now. Definitely. That's <laughs> always yeah. a good choice. Yeah. Um, and today is also shaping up to be a really nice day. Temperatures getting up into the upper 60s. Taking a look outside, nice sunrise shot. Still right now, we're in the 30s across the region. Some counties still in the near freezing temperatures. Um, taking a look, Iola 31, Fort Scott 31, Nevada and Stockton both 32 degrees. So pretty chilly up in the northern counties. And we do have that frost advisory. And also these wind chills are pretty low right now. Lowest ones being 28 degrees. So starting off your morning a little bit cooler, but we'll warm up a lot as we move through the day. Now the frost advisory is in effect until about 8 a.m. today, and it's expanded to most of our counties in Kansas as well as all of our counties in Missouri. Now we have some clouds here and there throughout the day, more increasing as we move into the afternoon hours. But other than that, we don't have any rain in the forecast, not until Saturday night. So today and tomorrow, both gonna be really nice days getting up to the upper 60s today for our high. And like I said, mostly sunny all day, maybe a cloud here or there, but it's gonna be a really great Friday and a nice Saturday as well. I'll have more details for you in just a bit. All right, thanks, Lindsay. Well, Freeman Hospital in Neosho, Missouri is providing a life-saving screening to women free of charge. Women can get free mammograms at the hospital today from 8 a.m. to 1 p.m. 
The free screenings are provided by the Helping Friends Mammogram Fund, which also provides free screenings every year at the Freeman Women's Center in Joplin. This is the first year it's been provided at the Neosho campus. Community members yesterday came together at the Fort Scott National Cemetery to recognize and remember those who have served our country. The University of Central Missouri, along with several local secondary educators, work to research and create biographies about underrepresented veterans from the Civil War and World War II. Those who attended were separated into four groups and each group was assigned a soldier. Well, I think that a lot of our youth today don't really realize the sacrifices that were made for us to have the freedoms that we have and that any chance we get to kind of share that message with them is an important message to send. The Fort Scott National Cemetery is open to the public every day from dawn to dusk. Atlanta Community College in Iola yesterday kicked off its annual Aggie Days event. It showcases the school's agriculture program and features plenty of opportunities for learning. The day includes a variety of competitions covering everything from livestock judging to nursery landscaping and much more. It's also a proud tradition in Allen County. I can't tell you really when Aggie Day started, but I remember coming to Aggie Days as a student and as a 4-H member way back in the 80s. So it's been going on for a long time. It's a tradition that Alan is proud of, that we have students come here every day, and we spend a lot of time preparing for it. A great tradition indeed. Event organizers say the day drew close to 700 students to the campus for agriculture career activities. OPSU hosted actor Rain Wilson, best known as Dwight Schrute in the TV show The Office, as part of the H. Lee Scott Speaker Series yesterday evening. The author, producer, and philanthropist spoke about truth, identity, and purpose. He also participated on a panel with more than 15 students. I'm fortunate because college students tend to love The Office and really res respond to Dwight and stuff like that. So. Um, and, you know, the things I'm interested in, um, I feel like a lot of college students can relate to. It was a sold out event. More than 1000 people attended in his talk. Rain Wilson also spoke about hope and April is National Month of Hope, which celebrates the power of the feeling. Some four staters know exactly how hope can be encouraging, especially when dealing with life's ups and downs. KOAM's Fernanda Silva has their story. Hope is what keeps you going every day. Sharon Clark had to learn the hard way how important it is to cultivate the feeling of hope. During your cancer journey, you do want to just give up. You just feel terrible and you think, why go through this? Clark had to deal with a diagnosis and treatment twice. The first one came when she was 27 years old and pregnant. She chose not to give up on herself or her baby. That tells me a lot about your hope, how mm -hmm. you're very hopeful that things mm -hmm. were going to work out for you mm -hmm. and for your kid. Yes, um, there is hope and in the end it was worth every bad day I had. We only get one shot at life. Clark started advocating, not only for the early detection of cancer with the four states Hope for You Breast Cancer Foundation, but also for the feeling carried in the name of the organization where she is the president. Clark is joined by actor Rain Wilson in the mission of spreading hope. They don't work together, their audience and reach are different, but their message is similar. Get young people kind of thinking on a, maybe on a slightly different level, on a little deeper level and a little inspiration, a little cajoling, a little laughter along the way. It's one of my favorite activities. Wilson uses his platform to talk about the pursuit of happiness, among many other things. People are interested in me for Dwight, and that opens doors for me to be able to speak about other stuff that I'm really passionate about, like mental health and, and spirituality. A famous person has so many avenues to be a platform for hope. A feeling that can take people further. As long as you have hope, I think anything's possible. Fernanda Silva, KOAM News. To learn more about Hope For You, go to our website at koamnewsnow.com. That's a look at our top news stories coming up this half hour on the KOAM Morning News. 
If it's Friday, you know what that means. We've got Shannon Becker live in studio to help us close out the week with his big three news stories. And we have a nice and sunny day today. We'll have what to expect with Lindsay Gaffney in the Skywatch Weather Center. You're watching the KOA Morning News. We'll be right back. But first, here's a live look from Antiquish Mall in Missouri and Missouri's largest garage sale. If you want the best for less, call Windows for less. Welcome back. We've got Shannon Becker in the studio with his big three news stories of the week. Good morning, Shannon. Good morning, Elise. Are yes. you well? I'm well. How are you? I'm ready been for that busy. eclipse. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I've got my uh, tinfoil hat. Oh, yes. Of course. You got your glasses. Oh, my gosh. I can't believe the conspiracy theories. Oh. Anyway, let's talk about the big three right now. <laughs> this was this last weekend on Saturday. Loose barges on the Arkansas River at the Kerr Reservoir. Oh, this wow. is just outside of Fort Smith. Can you believe that? Uh, these barges slammed into the bridge pillars of US 59, which of course runs through our area yes. here. Uh, no one was injured. They had Oklahoma Highway Patrol did close down US 59 okay, yes. across there for about three and a half hours for inspection. It uh, had a lot of talk and discussion online. Absolutely. Our number two story, KOEM News Now, an apartment fire devastating. When yes. I showed up to this, I was like, oh, I had think of those of Chanute. flames up there. It's wow. The exact same yes. apartment building as Chanute, 24 okay. apartments. Wow. But in Joplin, they have different codes and different uh, building restrictions. There's a fire stop in the roof line so it doesn't burn down the entire building. Oh, no, thank goodness. Yeah. Wow. Joplin Fire Department, if you see that live video, you can see the firefighters. We talk about it during the live video, how they're positioning themselves in a breezeway in between yes. those buildings. It's really inspiring and really amazing to see Absolutely. their work there. Our number one story, KOEM News Now, tragedy on Monday night, these storms that I was talking about, mm -hmm. they're calling it straight line winds. However, it was a radar indicated tornado in Carthage on the square. We were there live uh, taking yes. a look at that damage firsthand. No one was injured amazingly. Uh, yes, absolutely. Winds uh, about I mean, 100 look at that mile an hour. Wow. Yeah, this is right on the southeast corner of the square. Uh, damaged like you would not believe. Roofs, we guess maybe a dozen buildings, parts of the roof were lifted off. Uh, some of the businesses reopened yesterday, but Carthage is doing all right. They're back to Good. business. Yes. So don't be afraid about not going to Carthage. The square was not damaged. The square, uh, excuse me, the courthouse was not damaged okay. for sure. And then our bonus story, it also takes us back near Carthage. Look at these winds here on the left hand side oh of your screen. Goodness. That's my friend Sherilyn. She took that video at her house. And this is a home not too far from there. The Brown family totally destroyed their house. Wow. Uh, some trees fell and then blew against the front of their home. They're in the path of what you would maybe call straight line winds also uh, that went from a path from Inca Road all the way to the square. Uh, that's the family there. They've lost everything. They do have insurance, but you know, insurance doesn't buy you brand new underwear tomorrow. Right. You know, that's going to take a while. So wow. they do have a family. It's devastating to look at. Yeah, it's, but they're okay. Good. And their yes. pets are okay. So it's a great story. You have to read it. Can't replace that. No, not at all. Great story, read it. It's on our news website, KOM News Now. And that right there, that's where they hid inside their house in the middle there. So wow. everybody's all right. Amazing that they were able to find shelter. Yes. That could have been devastating, more devastating than even just the looks of it right there. That's our big three. You can check it out on KOM News Now. Wonderful, Shannon. Thank you so much, as always. Lovely to have you here. And stick around. We're back with the birthdays and a full look at the forecast when we return. The new $1.99 Sonic Crispy Garlic Butter. Bacon. Garlic. Butter. Need we say more? Sonic Garlic Butter Bacon Cheeseburger. Well, it's time to celebrate birthdays here in the four states, starting out with Carson Bookout, turning seven from Erie, Kansas. Happy birthday, Carson. And Sawyer Burge, also turning seven. We are super proud of him, says the message. 
And over in Chautauqua, Adelyn Midget is turning nine today. Happy birthday, Adeline. Happy ninth birthday as well to Jack Owens from Joplin, Missouri. Message says, happy birthday, love mom and dad. One more ninth birthday over in Chinook, Kansas is Corey Thompson. <laughs> happy birthday, Corey. Evelyn Smith hitting the double digits with her 10th birthday today out in Columbus, Kansas. Happy birthday, Evelyn. And a happy birthday to Josie Baker, who's turning 17 today from Altamont, Kansas. Alec Cleveland is turning 20 from Carthage, Web City area. We are so proud of this young man. May your 20th year be amazing. We love you so much. And Cole Southerton is turning 34 today. It says happy birthday from Steston and wife. Mike Myers is turning 69 from Chanute, Kansas. Happy birthday, Mike. Over in Columbus, a happy birthday to Verna Cozart. And celebrating their 38th anniversary out in Joplin, Missouri, Ronald and Feli Sachs. Happy anniversary, you two. And one of our very own is having a birthday today, KOAM's administrative assistant, Shelly Saparito, who is lovely. We love Shelly here at KOAM, and we hope you're having a very happy birthday today, Shelly. And Steve Freeman out in Columbus, Kansas, having a birthday as well. Happy birthday, Steve. And Caleb Bench and Chanute is turning 14 today. Happy birthday, Caleb. Finally, Jerry Globe turning 73 from Fort Scott, Kansas. Message says, best wishes from friend of 56 years, Richie and girlfriend Pamela. You know, that was a great, fantastic even birthday list. Don't you think, Lindsay? I definitely agree. Absolutely. And if you would like to have your birthday or anniversary mentioned, we'd love to celebrate it with you. Make sure to submit to birthdays at koamnewsnow.com. Include those messages and photos and meet the deadline at the bottom of your screen. Now over to Lindsay for a look at the forecast. So we started off today chillier than normal with a frost advisory in effect, but sun is starting to come up and we will warm up throughout the day. Yesterday also below average with our high only hitting 62 and our low in the mid 30s. Today we started off even cooler than that though and we have this frost advisory in effect until 8 a.m. today. Now, in addition to that, out west of us, out in Wichita, there is a wind advisory. Now, tomorrow, that's when we're gonna see those really fast, gusty winds, so we may have a wind advisory taking place in our area tomorrow. Continuing on, we have some clouds in the area. However, for the most part, no rain or much going on today. It's gonna be a really nice sunny day. Nothing moving into our area until Saturday. We'll have some storms coming in later in the evening on Saturday. Still right now sitting over California. So we won't expect that for another couple of days. And we're gonna have a nice couple of days that is. Right now, still in the 30s. We're starting off pretty early, about 7 a.m. Stockton 32, Iola still 30 degrees. Now some of us already warming up out in Neodosha 41, Chanute 42. So we're getting up there as we move into the later morning hours. Started off today about 34 degrees though. So cooler than what we saw yesterday. Light winds and to later today we're getting up to the upper 60s. 67, 68 across the region, maybe even hitting into the 70s. As we move through the day, we'll have some clouds increasing and temperatures only drop down to the lower 50s. So it's gonna be a nice couple of days ahead. Tomorrow we will start to see winds pick up, but it will be warm with our temperatures getting into the mid 70s across the region. So we're finally back into the 70s. Last couple of days this week have been pretty cool after those storms that passed on Monday. Then in addition to that, we've got some more storms rolling in later on Saturday, coming in around 11 p.m. and only lasting in the overnight hours. By Sunday, we're gonna have it cleared out completely in the morning and we're gonna have another sunny day, maybe breezy still, but temperatures hitting into the 70s. Let us take a look and see what you can expect for your Saturday. Here we have those storms rolling in at 11 p.m. and mostly heavy rainfall, but you could expect a thunderstorm or two. We do have a marginal risk for storms um, set for Saturday. 
Now, after that, we'll have those storms move into our area around 2.30 a.m. Continuing on, we'll be completely cleared out by 6 a.m. And then we're going to have a nice next couple of days until Monday, that is, around 1.30. This is when we're expecting to see the solar eclipse. This is the line of uh, totality where you'll expect to see a full solar eclipse. Now, out in our region, only a partial solar eclipse, but the entire region is covered in clouds. So that may pose a threat to being able to see the solar eclipse, but we will keep you updated on what you can expect to see a little bit closer to the event. Maybe those clouds will clear out of here so everyone will get a nice view of that event moving in on Monday. All right, so today we're getting up to the upper 60s. It's going to be nice, sunny, warm all day long. The wind chills not going to be cooler like it was yesterday. Tonight getting down to the low 50s. Tomorrow and the next few days after that into the 70s. Then we do have those rain chances coming in Saturday night. And then we'll be pretty breezy on Sunday, continuing on. Clouds roll in on Monday with more rain chances coming in Tuesday for the next few days after that. Now coming up when the KOM morning news switches on over to Fox 14, we'll see how the next time you order food, your delivery person might be in a self-driving vehicle. We are proud to salute Patrick Weldon, a four state hero. Well, here's a check of today's top headlines. The news you need to know before you head out the door. The Missouri Attorney General requests an execution date for convicted child killer Christopher Collings. In November of 2007, Collings abducted, raped, and murdered nine-year-old Rowan Ford from Estella, Missouri in Newton County. In 2012, a jury from Plate County in a courtroom in Phelps County convicted Collings and sentenced him to death. Authorities in Pittsburgh charge a man they say broke into the home of an armed with a knife. It happened Wednesday around 5.15 p.m. in the 900 block of East 8th Street. Officers arrested 25-year-old Zach Camplin of Pittsburgh. He's charged with aggravated assault, criminal threat, and criminal property damage. That's a check of today's top headlines. The news you need to know before you head out the door. And taking a look at the 10 day forecast today, we're getting up to the upper 60s warming up. Sun stays out all day long, may have some clouds rolling in this evening and a low tonight of only low 40, 50s. Tomorrow we'll hit the 70s and it'll be pretty windy. Clouds roll in as well. And then we have storm chances coming in later on Saturday that evening around 11 p.m throughout the overnight hours, giving us another nice day on Sunday, clearing out pretty early in the morning. So it's gonna be a good couple of days ahead of us other than the rain on Saturday, but yeah, absolutely. Well, coming up today at noon, we're making American goulash in the Mr. Food Test Kitchen. And your morning news continues on KOAM with CBS Mornings. Or you can switch on over with us on Fox 14 where your only local morning news continues. This morning, we'll see how Fort Scott residents came together to remember those who served our country. Plus, Shannon Becker joins us back in the studio to talk about his big three top news stories of the week. But that'll wrap it up for now. We'll see you back here Monday morning at 5 a.m. Yes, we will. And we'll see you today at noon.